<laughs> Welcome to Burning in Hell. What's up, guys? I'm Hannah Burner, and we're with Hysterical... Oh, we're live? Yeah, we're live. Okay, great. We're, <laughs> I just decide. <laughs> we're with Hysterical, lesbian comedian who destroys straight men, um, horse girls, and hecklers. And that's all I do. <laughs> that's all she does. I'm only a lesbian comedian, and those are the only three <laughs> topics that I do. I Otherwise, just... I'm not a person. <laughs> By the way, this is my very great friend, Ashley, who I've known for years, who like helped me get into stand-up comedy like literally explained to me what a joke is once at a coffee shop and i was like wow this girl's amazing i'm indebted to her for life no but I, I checked your tiktok though and i'm like what's she talking about lately and i was like noted <laughs> destroying horse, <laughs> horse girls and girls. straight men i'm into it <laughs> yeah I, I mean it works on tiktok very well to have like you know a thing that you do um but yeah come come to a show i talk about other things are you are you saying that you are more nuanced than just the lesbian comic who d destroys people i i would say that yes wow well, but if it's the if it was if the just that i'd be into it you, yeah <laughs> if you're one of hannah's listeners and you're just tired of men which i imagine they all are yes <laughs> you can go to my tiktok and watch me just just absolutely rip them a second asshole i feel like um, our listeners are way more similar than different yeah i agree i agree I think my listeners think people are more similar than different. Wow. Can you imagine? Look at us just solving the world's problems. <laughs> <laughs> One podcast at a time. I was laughing because the first thing we talked about when I interviewed you two years ago was discussing pubic hair regimens, which is literally the first thing I said as soon as I sat down. The first thing we, you said, quarantining with your girlfriend, which we're not quarantining or no, I'm girlfriending. Single. Yeah which we're excited about <laughs> um, changing careers from an engineer to comedian and the perks of rock bottom. But your life has changed a lot. in these. Yeah. Last two yeah. Years. The past two years have been super transformative. I mean, a lot of it, thanks to like you and a lot of the other people who helped me with podcasting. Um, a lot of it, the Chinese government, TikTok. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Chinese government, for all you've done. But I would argue, have you really changed that much? Or have you just kind of find, found platforms that enable yeah. people to see you more? You know, because before I was just like, I'm a stand-up comic and I was trying to get really good at stand-up comedy. And like, I was. And no one cared. Like, no one cares until you have the platform. And it needs that much work. I know this is like so boring to everybody at home, but like you need to work on your social media presence as much as your comedy. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic happened, I had nothing to do. So I was like, okay, well, I might as well treat TikTok and Instagram and my podcast as formally as I treat my stand-up comedy. And that's really all, all it needed. I remember sitting with you at coffee and you basically being like, I don't know what else I need to do because you're like, I feel so good about my stand-up, but nothing is catching like yeah you're like i have no momentum in my career yeah and i remember just thinking like well when's it gonna happen yeah i hope it happens because <laughs> she sounds like she's gonna kill herself I'm like, <laughs> it's getting pretty dark and yeah, i'm a yeah. little worried i was i was losing it i don't know if i was in the darkest place when we kind of became friends but shortly before, I would say six months before that, I was in like a very dark place. And I was like, I have to change everything. Well, you had a girlfriend at the time. But also, do you feel like being single allowed you to kind of immerse yourself in the work more? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Although I did. That relationship was so healthy. That was like another big life change as I got into a healthy relationship. You got some confidence, I feel like. Right now? Like from the relationship oh, to now. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You have like swag coming off you right now really yeah wow i thought i looked like shit this is a dirty shirt no i went i went through my laundry no you look like shit but the energy coming <laughs> off you is really swag no i can actually smell you you smell like shit is that horse manure you really are doing that that horse girl that horse girl stuff i feel like you went from like lesbian comic no one knows to lesbian comic on the road that everyone wants to fuck i no comment <laughs> Are you being coy now? Yeah, it's, it's, I don't usually do anything though. Usually I don't, I get inquiries. Okay. And I'm then I, I kindly, I kindly say thank you for your inquiry. I, I am not, I try not to do it. I have a lot of male comics yeah, who male, are, you yeah. know, I've, we've met a lot of below average male comics who talk about <laughs> on the road, like 
all tons of girls they hook up with, not Ian Lara or any guys on my pod. They're great. Um, was Ian Lara just on? Ian Lara had some amazing hookup stories, but he's actually a hilarious I, I love comic. Ian. He's great. Um, and so to hear a lesbian's perspective of what the road is like, because I know from a straight girl, the road is different from a straight man. But oh, what, for sure. For sure. I think it's that women are more inclined to sleep with someone because they're funny than men are. I yes. think to men, it's like challenging yes. to have a woman who is confident and funny yeah. and sort of like the alpha in the room, like commanding the room, you know? Yeah, you can control the energy of the room with your jokes and that's like intimidating yes. for a guy. very. That very. you could like change the but mood. But for a guy, you know, like Des, like that's not intimidating and that's great. Yeah. And that's like such a green flag, I think, in a man, even yeah. as a friend. Like the guys that I'm friends with, I don't think they have a problem with funny women. No, and that's super important because I'll hang out with guys and the whole time they're just talking about how I make jokes and how I'm funny in a way that like they can't get it out of their head. Where like I feel like <laughs> girls don't do that when they're like no. with a male comic. No, they're not they're like, like, oh, so what's a joke? It's yeah. crazy you do jokes. They're not like that. They're just like, okay, that was hot. Fuck me. Yeah, they're like, tee -hee. <laughs> um, Yeah, it's nice. I will say it's very flattering mm -hmm. to... I got on stage in Denver. This is wild. I hope no one thinks of this as arrogant. This is really just like. No, I'm forcing her to give me stories. Okay. She, she's the most humble bitch in the world. That's so funny. I think I have like an arrogant persona. Yeah, but you but are off stage. I'm like very much Not like I'm a piece of humble, shit. that you're humble. You're more like practical, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Like you're very factual with stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely like. You're definitely not boasting or like making like big stories of how great you and, are and if i am it's like a bit like you're, i'm doing a bit no you're like i got a hundred laughs you know per minute and that's just what i got <laughs> <laughs> so hannah's right i have a spreadsheet that i keep track of all my jokes i'm like data. did you kill it and she's like i'll tell you exactly how i did <laughs> <laughs> let me grab my calculator on my spreadsheet i have my, my data let me get my data um yeah this weekend i walked on stage in denver i did the denver comedy works have you done it I just did a couple weeks ago. Best club in the world. Best club in the world. Best club in the world. Unreal. Did you say in the condo? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I walked in that condo and I was like, if I don't fucking hear, I'm going to kill myself. I'm gonna, it's going to ruin my life. Trigger warning. I say kill myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I like that because at least put a warning. I, yeah, I've people sometimes get upset about it. Yeah. Ah, I used to want to die if that makes it, you feel better. Yeah. But yeah. I'm it's, recovered now so I can make It's from jokes. personal experience. Yeah. Uh, the condo, I actually arrived at 8 a.m. and to do one to do two shows on a Sunday yeah. night. Oh, Jared Freed was still in the condo. That's so funny. It's so like because I had got there earlier and they didn't. Did you guys know? No, but they couldn't get well, they me into up. the condo. They're great. They didn't fuck up. They're they, wonderful. They're perfect. It in wasn't way. their fault. It was, they added an earlier show for me. So I had to fly in earlier, right, but they right. didn't factor that in. And right. I guess we didn't communicate it. Yeah. So I'm exhausted after waking up in th at 3 a.m. in Austin to get there. <laughs> and Jared's I fuck, in like you know, a road. And no, but road. they can't even they can't even find the key because Jared has right, it. Right, right. So I'm sitting there for like an hour. Finally, we realize that he's there. We basically break in, and I just go in the other bedroom and fall asleep. He doesn't even know I'm there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my friend's like, "Why don't you just text him?" And I'm like, "Because that would be too easy. I want it to be chaotic." Woke up to him like yelling in his podcast, and then was like, "By the way, I'm here," and it was hilarious. But yes, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Did you? F no, no. I'm like such a I'm like such an old lady these days. I'm very picky since the healthy relationship. But I got on stage in, at the show at one of the shows. Um, I came on stage and this girl started weeping as soon as I got on stage. I have it on film. I'm gonna put it on my YouTube. You're stuff like, like Justin that. Bieber. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> and then I was like, one less lonely girl. And I brought her on stage and I kissed her. No, no that's didn't. not what happened. That'd be amazing. I was though. like, why are you crying? And she was like, oh, I I just. She said this, is her friend, she was weeping. She couldn't even speak. Her friend goes, she just found out she's gay. And I was like, at the doctor? Like, why did you phrase <laughs> it like that? But she was going through her coming out process and she was just so emotional. I think being surrounded by all these queer people and then like having this person that embodies, I think, I, I'm not taking credit for this, but I think why queer women are so drawn to my work is because I am so out. Yes. And I'm not apologetic about it at all i don't care if people think my set is too gay i don't care if it's funny it's funny like straight people love it like who gives a shit what i'm talking about so i think that that people are 
are like, oh my God, I can live that way. Well, it's refreshing to see someone who is comfortable in their skin. Yeah. And you have other anxieties that we love about you and things that you worry about. But I feel like in terms of your sexuality and, and knowing what you love to do, it's really like Which fun is women. to be around. <laughs> I was going to say math and jokes, but yes, women do. <laughs> but I also, jokes. I'm trying to be cool right now, but like, I'm the same as you. I was never good at like the hookup thing. I'm very like sensitive to, yes. I, and I do believe like when you have too many of other people's energies, like all over you, it it's a lot. Well, I've also gotten scared because so much has changed in the past two years. Like it used to be kind of funny that girls wanted to h hook up with me after shows, but now I've like definitely gotten into situations where I'm like, oh, you make me feel not emotionally safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, also, they and have an idea of who, they who are. you are. Yeah, yeah. And TikTok, how would you describe your audience that you've cultivated? Um, it's A lot of them are young. You know, a lot of them are like 20 to 25, and they're newly out, and they've never seen stand-up comedy in their entire life. Oh, wow. They don't listen to podcasts. Yeah. So this is like their first experience with comedy it's the first time they've wanted to go see stand-up comedy so it's it's actually a challenging audience in a way because mm -hmm. they're so broken from the pandemic you know because they're they forget how to act both. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so the lights will go down at a show and maybe one person starts to clap and the rest are like why are you doing that and it's it's like please do that please do all the things that you're supposed to do in public it's true every now and then when someone like heckle or be weird i'd be like look we haven't been outside a lot. You do you. <laughs> Let's all just enjoy just being around other people. Right, right. But I want to ask you, from the dark place that you were to where you are now, what would you tell that Ashley? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that laughter was the first thing you did. When well, I, asked I know you that, that that Ashley would be like, you're not as far along as I want you to be. <laughs> <laughs> like good work i'm glad you finally got something going but yeah. like you could be doing better yeah but i think i would oh man i think i would just say every everything's worth it like it you're so sad but everything don't don't kill yourself like everything's gonna be worth it you're a good example of that full circle where like you were an engineer it wasn't making you happy you changed and i really honestly feel that all those things that you didn't end up committing to yourself fully all enhanced you popping off with the marketing and the social media. Like if you weren't so smart, you would not have been able to cultivate this audience the way you did. It's the mo it's more helpful now than it ever has been. Wow. A lot of times people are like, uh, a lot of times people are like, Oh, I'm sure that was very helpful at the beginning when you had to do a lot of things yourself. It's like, no, now it's way more helpful. Cause we're talking about a million people. Like I need to write code and think about these things on a scale because it's so many people. I can't like do the little things anymore. I have to have like a robot do it for me. So I used to I used to be a, a software engineer for people. It's so yes. fucking boring. It's, <laughs> it's, everyone just clicked off. You watch it, the numbers are like math, math. I thought this was a girls podcast. I th I thought no this was about more women health. should be in math. Yeah, women in STEM. Not us, but other people. Right, I I quit, but you should. Wait, do what's it. your beef with horse girls though? Oh, I don't like what did they ever do to you? I did go on a date. I went on a couple dates with one. And I very jokingly said to her, I was like, you know, come on, horse girls are, look, horse girls know. Horse girls are the first people to tell you like, ah, you know, it's a little funny. Yes. They are a little funny. They're, it's like crazy cat ladies, but like horse girls. Yes, yes. And we're crazy cat ladies. Yes, we are. Um, but I, I was on a date with this, I went on a couple of dates with this girl and I went back to her apartment and I was like, so you gonna... You gonna get the riding crop? We gonna like do that, and she was like, "That's not funny." And I was like, "It's actually hysterical." And <laughs> so now I'm going to write a five minute joke about it. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you now that you're single, how has that affected your material? Because I have to work on. I've always been single, and now I'm fucking married, so I'm work. That's something I have to figure out within me. I'm writing a lot from the place about why I'm single like I'm getting very vulnerable about Ooh. my my mental health and Ooh. like dating the wrong types of people and like how I was bringing bad things to relationships and like fixing my brain mm -hmm. and you know my relationship with my mom oh yeah fuck and, yeah yeah so it's like I'm writing a lot about that and it's funny because now I'm getting weird dms from women because like sing this single Ashley like I look like a fuck boy 
I know how I look if you're watching this on YouTube. This is on YouTube, right? Yeah, you look like a frat star. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm like very much want to be baby. You know what I mean? I want want someone to... Be daddy? Not to be... (laughs) Not to be daddy. (laughs) Mommy? Maybe a little mommy. Just a little. Because I do that for people. And I want someone to meet me where I'm at. In the bedroom. (laughs) Not What are we talking about right now? (laughs) You're like, what is lesbian sex? I was like... (laughs) And then the baby does... (laughs) I think like I have always been like the more like assertive organized yeah, person yeah. but then in the relationship you like to not have to be in charge of everything i want someone who's done as yeah as much emotional work who can meet me where i am that's what i want i think i'm similar yeah. like i'm uh, i'm not a caretaker for the relationship i always have been yeah so i'm looking for someone who can meet be my equal in that yes and so why am i talking about this I love it. I don't, you, you were talking about how in, you're discovering more about who you oh, are in relationship yeah. and how you want to be baby. Yeah. So I'm writing a lot about being baby. Is and that a lesbian thing or is this a you thing? <laughs> I think it's a me thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but now I get these DMs from women being like, I will cuddle you and we don't have to do anything else. Like, cause that's like from one of my jokes yeah. where I'm like, oh, I want the app where we, we match. We don't hook up. We just scratch each other's heads. Like, which app is that? You know, oh. like what's the, I don't want Tinder. I want Tickler, you know, <laughs> the scissor app S Z R. I recently was talking to someone about like one of my lesbian friends about why there is no lesbian app. And they said, there's one called her and it doesn't work. Why do you think more, it doesn't work? More women in STEM. We can't code. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry, lesbians. I know you're writing code. I know you code. We know the lesbians are. You keep doing you. But I think it's because the girls, the men are so like chase, stereotypically chase the woman, message the woman. Where with girls, it's like you message me. Yeah. No, and, you message and that's exactly me. what it is. That that happens all the time. We call it useless lesbians. We just stare at each other from across the room for like 45 minutes and no one makes a move. And that's I, your foreplay? That's our foreplay. Just staring, just intense. And climaxing is just not getting each other's number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But the thing is, I think, you know, if you have queer and bi listeners and you definitely do, yeah, um, that's why it can be so much easier to just kind of default to dating men because it's just so much. First of all, there's way more heterosexual spaces. And second of all, you just stand there and men approach you. You're so right. And with us, it's a much you have to make an effort. You have to push yourself outside of this comfort zone that you've been socialized. You have to listen. Yeah, exactly. You have to listen, you have to, listen <laughs> you have to, to people. come up with questions. I also think that <laughs> if someone does match as someone on a lesbian app within three days, they start dating and they're off the app. So like that's not yes. sustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For an, a long oh, term. Oh, trust app. me, I know. <laughs> I'm on the apps and it is not going well. It's I'm interesting. I grab my water if that's okay. Oh yeah, I do think that. Th- I do. Girls, Gen Zs, you made that for yourself. I did. Gen Zs, I find more girls are very open to like, instead of being like, I'm straight, they're kind of like, I don't know what I am. And then they decide later on if they're straight or gay, which is something that we in our generation never experienced. They're just way more younger people who identify as bi and pan Mm -hmm. and queer than than ever before. And I don't know if this is New York City because this is like the people I'm around. No, it's I'm actually, around. they did a Gallup poll. 20% of Gen Z identifies as queer in some way. Wow. And you can guarantee that there are some people who are choosing not to yeah, like say yes on that question. I just know I have some friends whose daughters are teens and they're like, oh, they've all hooked up with girls. And like part of me is a little jealous in that like... <laughs> I'm married now <laughs> and that was never like I mean I guess girls were like making out with girls at parties but in a very Not like same male gay yeah, performative yeah, yeah. thing where I just feel like really proud of these girls coming up who just have that freedom me too it's also great for me just on a dating level um that everyone is by now the pandemic <laughs> the pandemic did wonders for, for that there's no straight women left well lesbian tiktok is I've been on lesbian. People love have, lesbian. If TikTok. you haven't been on lesbian TikTok, what are you doing? Where it's, I feel like where lesbians have found a place to express themselves <laughs> so freely that I haven't been able to see. And then I feel like I'm like a, a like fly on the wall. Yeah, like a creepy voyeur. And I'm like, what are they? What are they doing? What's <laughs> what are the? What's going on? Yeah, just a lot of licking, a lot of licking. But um. Do you enjoy lesbian TikTok? I don't scroll for my mental health. Like I don't. Ooh, explain. Like I'm, I have a super addictive personality. Mm-hmm. So I don't like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't scroll on TikTok. So Be- what do you do instead? 
instead of scrolling. <laughs> yeah. I just post TikToks and I walk away. I feel like I'm, I have an addictive personality. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I do scroll though. And I'm something I'm struggling with. I realize it's cause like, I just love doing things that numb my brain. Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? And I never liked alcohol or drugs because th- that would scare me what my yeah, brain control. would do. Yeah. So like, but like the scrolling, watching TV, napping, I was like, wait, why do I love this stuff so much? And I actually had like an epiphany today and I'm like, oh, I you need I to start nap. getting used to your brain just like functioning and like not being scared of your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've had this mental health podcast for three years and I'm suddenly like, oh, you're still fucking scared of your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Meditating is important for that. You've been a big meditator? Yeah, yeah. What's your process? Years. Well, I started a long time ago. Um, I, I meditate for 20 minutes every day. But when I started, I started with one minute. And then I just tried to do it every day. In the morning? Typically in the morning. If I have a super busy day, I'll do it at the end of the day. And I'll even do like a short one if it's like a crazy day. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And uh, there are a lot of apps. I really like 10% Happier. Not oh. a lot of people know that one. It's like, I think a more <laughs> headspace. There's just only one teacher. And like one approach and 10% happier. You have some teachers who are like very cynical. Like that if you are mm. a cynical person, yeah, they have teachers that are very much like, yeah, like you, this sounds so stupid. They're I like, I that. totally understand how dumb this sounds, but it's actually good for you. Yeah. Because there was that whole trend of like spiritual warriors and like, we're so fucking cool. And some people don't align with that. What is a spiritual warrior? I have it's not heard just, this. It's kind of just like these women who love being spiritual and they just like love it so much and spiritual gangsters that's what they call themselves I don't like the straight side of the internet that no whatever this is. Stay, stay off of it <laughs> <laughs> I actually speaking of the straight side of the internet straight girls I'll always deal with like the whole daddy issues thing daddy issues do you think lesbians do you joke about mommy issues we do yeah Ooh, I've never heard this before please explain well I, I think it's just like the same thing. You're just like trying to look for some sort of diagnosis as to why you are the way you are. And mm-hmm. so we like latch on to like those identifiers. Um, but I do think that queer people generally just have problems with their parents. You yeah. know what I mean? Like w- when you come out, you like, you really challenge your family. So you'd be, I mean, some people have accepting parents, but mm-hmm. for the most part, like especially the millennials and up, like you probably had some pretty significant Trauma. Parental, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I guess I'm excited for the Gen Z's who like, they probably do deal with parent drama as well, but at least they're normalizing it for that next generation. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm obsessed with. Cause yeah, with straight girls, they're always like daddy issues. That's why you go for these kind of guys. But I mean, you could have daddy issues as a lesbian and makes you go for certain girls. Of course. For sure. And straight people have mommy issues and men sure. have mommy issues too, which I think <laughs> is like a funny thing for sure you know when you're watching the bachelor and like they're always like the girls are always like i'm just looking for someone like like my dad and the guys (laughs) are like i'm just looking for someone like i want to hear a bachelor come onto the show and be like i am looking for someone like my dad that's all i want to hear because it sounds gay in this weird way yeah to be like i want a woman who is like my father i just want to hear that my best friend in school was this lesbian who i like loved (laughs) <laughs> and she had a six four brother, and I basically was like, "He's you, but like, if you were a guy and six four, right?" And I love it, <laughs> <laughs> but it shows like just how people's souls are so intertwined. I think I've dated a lot of guys who I've met their mom and been like, "Oh, that's why you like me," because like they're. N- <laughs> Sorry, I like keep coughing. <laughs> One sec. It's okay. My voice is shot. I don't know if you can hear Dude. it. <laughs> Sorry, cough break. <laughs> Dude, comedy works. I had to get used this yeah. to the amount of laughter to like retime the joke. Yeah. You can pause for so long. Oh god. Okay. Anyway. Sorry, I must uh suffocating myself. Um, but yeah, so you've been doing how have you been doing work and with your mommy issues? What would you recommend for people to do if they I mean, I've been in some? therapy for fucking ever. Oh yeah, you've been in therapy since like four years old? Yeah. Yeah. At least she was like, we know what we're getting That into. is the one thing that I, like, my mom did a good job. She was, I don't even think she really understood that it was her fault. <laughs> but I think What she, do you think she put you in therapy for? Well, she straight up told me. She was like, we put you in therapy because you were angry. I was four years old. <laughs> 
Like I what? Like I came out of the womb and I was like, fucking sucks in there. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is this tickle me Elmo? What the fuck is this? I was like, I I had this when my mom said that to me, I literally was like, okay, all right. Like you gotta yeah. like, like this is so so maybe the reason why you went to therapy wasn't right but the overall yes she was trying to help she didn't understand that <laughs> it was her fucking fault <laughs> but she was trying to help is she proud of you oh yeah yeah i have a lot of problems with my mom but one thing she is very supportive mm -hmm. of my career and she is really proud She's proud no matter what, though. That's the other thing that's funny about a parent. You're like, yeah, well, you were proud of me when nothing was going well. <laughs> you were proud of me when I was doing something total. You were proud when I was... When like, I sneezed. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that it's good and bad. But I also think you there is a point where, like, mom and daughter, you start to really see them as a human. And you start to be like, would I be friends with this person? No. Like, do I <laughs> How do you really feel about that? <laughs> my problem is my mom and I are like stupid best friends. Like it's annoying. We're like whenever I if I ever hear this we're on very a date on a, I always go like my I start, I like do that cat thing where like my hair I'm like if I say I'm best friends with my mom yeah because I'm like what is <sighs> <laughs> like jealousy or red flag red flag yeah not not actually because now that I've been in enough therapy and I've met like my ex girlfriend had such a great relationship with her mother yeah. and I met her family and I was like, Oh, I didn't know that this could be, that how this could be so healthy. Yeah. My mom and I, we can get a little dependent on each other. We're like, if I don't, if she doesn't hear from me from two days, she thinks I died. Yeah. Cause like some days I'll call her like six times just cause I can, just cause I love talking to her. That's so nice. It's nice, but also I need, I also like love her opinions on everything where like I need to eventually do my own thing. Um, but I do think that I married someone who is similar to like everyone in my family. Mm. Like he has sides of my brother, my dad, my mom. It's very weird, but ultimately you want to find someone who feels like home. The question is like, what, what in a good way or a yeah, bad way? Exactly. What part of the home? Right. And what time of the home? Right. Kind of thing. But, um, what are you looking for in a partner? Just You're now on the bachelorette. I would love, I actually to the straights. <laughs> I would like to nominate myself as first lesbian bachelorette. <laughs> I think I'd be a really good one. You'd be amazing. I think it'd be great for girls who are experimenting. And uh, what am I looking for? Um, I want someone who has kind of two things. A done therapy, emotional work, in touch with their... Chakras. Yeah, their chakras. That's what I was going to say. Aligned chakras, for sure. Aura. Yes, good energy. Some, good energy something reading. With, something with sage. Yeah, maybe some some crystals. Mm -hmm. No, I mean actual. Has, have been have been to therapy and have some self awareness. Yes, yeah, that's very important because I don't think I could date someone who can't have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm super annoying too. Yeah, if someone in a relationship, I'm will definitely be like, "Have you talked about that in therapy? <laughs> Are you noticing a pattern? Because I'm noticing a pattern, <laughs> and people." hate that i will say it is my most toxic trait but i love it because it's straight <laughs> up like at least you're not passive aggressive no i'm not i'm aggressive <laughs> i'm aggressive <laughs> i'm aggressive aggressive capital a aggressive active aggressive is what i am <laughs> you start a note you're like i'm gonna write that down your notes so you could say that to dr cindy next week if i will say if you start taking notes in a relationship it's over <laughs> i've been there i've been taking notes in a relationship you're done. Oh my god! The I second love that. the notepad the notepad comes the out. The second the notepad goes out. <laughs> the second you start googling, is it toxic? If yes. the second you start googling, am I with a narcissist? <laughs> the second you start googling, is it normal that I cry all the time? <laughs> Dude, that is those are the scariest moments in life. Is it time to break up? It <laughs> yes. should yes. It should Sign, just say yes. Signs you're not with the right person. That's <laughs> yes. when you know, dude. Whenever you start asking your friends, is it weird that, do you ever feel, it? you're just it's like, so dude, funny you know. Like the first week I was like dating this girl, maybe not even, like I was a couple weeks in, you know, and I, I was like, I was asking my guy friends, I was like, how often do you guys have sex? And they like gave me an answer and I was like, there's a problem. 
Mm. I, I, there's a problem in this relationship. And mm. I knew it like four weeks in, I dated that person for like three years. Mm. And um, not to get into that one, but yeah, someone who can meet me where I am emotionally, but also I really want someone who's very driven by their career mm -hmm. uh, because if you're dating me and your career is not as important to you as mine is to me, it's going to create a, a dynamic that might not be so healthy. Yeah. I was scared that if I'm like super busy and that I'm with someone else who's super busy and driven in their career, then it could cause tension. But I realized like it doesn't. You figure it out, especially yes. you, I'd rather be that than someone who doesn't have a passion for something who's just kind of waiting around for me. That is when drama create happens. Codependency or yep. weird power dynamics. And I love creative people. I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't drawn to creative people, but that's like a bonus. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's interesting you brought up the how many times you have sex because someone it's on tiktok where i learn most of my stuff people so, which is accurate it's it's all it's like don't don't talk to it here it's very legit just see what the algorithm brings up for you I've and then just take that diagnosis from the internet and yep. apply it to yourself yep just whatever swipe up pills they're taking telling you to do yeah do that do it um <laughs> We get sponsored sued. by, <laughs> yeah, we immediately get sued. It's yeah, the amount of ADD medications these people have tried to offer me. I'm like, at this point, I get a diagnosis in my inbox on Instagram every week on Instagram or TikTok. Instagram, because like I'll be doing my podcast and someone I'll say like something oh. and someone will be like, you're celiac. I'm like, I'm not fucking yeah, celiac. Someone told me to end endometriosis the other day because I bloat my friend page. Ooh, I, I bloat quite a bit. I, they, she said I abnormally bloat. I abnormally bloat. I know this. And I was like, maybe I'm a balloon. Yes. Yeah. Do you think we have a problem? Yeah, but I don't. I don't know what it is. Should we take an ADD Do pill? Do I think we have a problem? Look at where we are right now. <laughs> I know we have a problem. We have a lot of problems. We do. So with the sex thing, a, a very wise, probably fourteen-year-old on TikTok said. She was complaining that like, if you don't have sex with them all the time anymore, it's not right. And then someone said, actually, that's kind of false. Yeah. Basically, like you you get this like high because yes. it's like a dopamine drug in yeah. the beginning. <clears throat> and that if you continue that like high of anxiety, that's why like some toxic relationships you think are so good. Cause you have that drug of like, will I get it? Will I not? Will I get it? Will I not? Yes. And they're like, if this sex stays like that, you're probably like anxious and it's not healthy. Yeah, yeah for sure. <clears throat> Where like, if it slows down a little, it means like, Oh, you're just, you have like a comfort, Yes, with them but if you're not having sex at all that's an issue but i think that's important that like you're not supposed to be fucking like rabbits forever yes and I'm just so i know that that's usually what people think when i bring this up just to say that yeah. was not what we were experiencing yeah. we were experiencing something different uh we weren't uh, she she frankly she was in the closet yeah and there was like almost no like new energy like new relationship energy like sexual it, she there was, was a lot of she, there was it sounds like she was battling her own stuff yes. where she couldn't be fully available and for there you. were things between us i don't want to speak on her behalf yeah. but in my opinion it was very much like the closet was was a big part of the the issue mm -hmm. um and i was like what's going on like this is very strange and so i just started talking to my friends and i was like this is weird like, so were you like kept a secret oh yeah i was in the closet with this girl for for like two years three years wow. three years but you were out but i was out yeah, that is, I mean, Pretending at first it's to be probably single. a little sexy and like secretive at first. And then you're like, okay, we're lying. I think that's true. Like if you're in high school, if you're yeah. like a 30 year old woman <laughs> and you're like thrust back in the closet, it's, you're just like, oh, this is traumatic. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It, it was awful. Dude. And you can't like tell someone to come out. No. Or force them. No. And you have no idea how long it's going to be. I do think there's a point where you as a gay person have every right to be like, hey, like, I can't be in this. Yeah. Like, and it, that there's nothing wrong with that. Do you, are you afraid of being with bi girls? No, not at all. I'm almost exclusively date bisexual girls. Ooh, what's the psyche behind that? Um, some of them are femme. I think it's more common. Yeah. I'm typically more attracted to femme women. Not that there aren't femme lesbians. I've dated plenty of femme, at least hooked up with femme lesbians. Mm -hmm. I think, I think bisexuality just like any is more common than mm -hmm. like to be like a straight up lesbian is like the rarest thing now. We're like this. Are you gold star? I am gold star. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm I'm gold star penis. Congratulations. Don't. It's not a good thing. It's not great. Um. I actually I reference you all the time. So you said the funniest thing ever to me once, and I don't remember where, but I I tell this joke all the time that I said to you, actually. <laughs> How do you know in lesbian sex when you're done? Because guys oh. explode, they just come and then it's over. Like, when do you guys finish? And you go, you ask. And I go, what's it like to have consensual sex? <laughs> <laughs> I literally die. You I ask. Think- <laughs> it's so funny that you would think that's funny. I'm just like, yeah. I was like, wait, you've asked during sex something? You've, you've, you've <laughs> communicated your feelings during sex? That's crazy. But <laughs> I do. I have this whole new bit about how sex is not consistently as good as society makes it seem, and just like normalizing like how losing your virginity is fucking weird, how like yeah. sitting on a guy's yeah. face is awkward. I, I I've gone way into it, and whenever there's a lesbian in the crowd, they always go, "Not if you're a lesbian," and then I always laugh with it. But it's so funny the different sexual experiences you guys have. And I've never done it, but I guess I have some jealousy because I'm like, you don't get worried about STDs. You don't get worried about pregnancies. That's just like the overarching thing. Then pregnancy you, for sure. STDs, it's you you it's, don't have to be as careful, but you still have to be careful just for the No, you're right. That was there. me spreading false um information. But you're not entirely wrong. It is harder to spread many of the You're STDs. the lowest of yes, the in yes. some data that I don't know. Um, but you <laughs> This is a very, this is a doctor podcast. I heard on a TikTok. I heard on TikTok. And then you can have as many orgasms as you want. But not every girl. As many as you want, kids. (laughs) It's an all you can eat (laughs) buffet pussé. But some girls don't have as many orgasms as As other girls. There's, I feel like I have like such a kink for girls who can come a bunch of times because I love doing that. So like, I think my record's 11 and wow. one time, not for me. I don't know if I can do that. I think I've done like six or seven. You're like, not that I'm counting, but it is 11 and a half. Um, <laughs> there was half an orgasm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I almost got it. Um, it's awesome because I feel like guys, once you kind of know, like, yeah, maybe some guys like slightly different things, but they're pretty simple in bed, I yeah, feel yeah, like. Yeah. Where girls, it's so nuanced. Yeah. And that's why I appreciate- Every time's different. The art of- being a lesbian it is an art it is an art form <laughs> it's a craft i love your work <laughs> thank you yeah i've been doing it a while um <laughs> do you have any advice on on the craft i w- i mean what do you mean advice for what? i don't know <laughs> do you have for, any advice do you have any advice for lesbians or i think there's probably a lot of people who've thought about it and like are intimidated by the idea of being with a woman because a lot of times i'll go on dates with women and they're bi or they're pan or they're queer or whatever. And they get worried when they're dating a lesbian because oh. they think like, oh, I don't have as much experience. But it's exactly what you just said. Every body is different, very different. So every time you go into sex with a new partner, and I think straight women probably know this even better than queer women, you guys know you're going to have to train this man in what you want. True. So like if you're scared to have queer sex like she knows that yes she knows that she's gonna have to teach you and you're gonna have to teach her or them and like that is just a part of the process and like don't be intimidated by it and if you are the more experienced partner it's a very kind thing to say to someone like don't be nervous and it's not weird if neither one of us has an orgasm the first few times because it's like difficult to learn mm-hmm. like it's to every one is every vulva is different and yeah perfect. and as as yeah. women we know <laughs> how hard it was for us to even understand ourselves Our, exactly so to understand another woman I, is a whole different totally. new fun journey to explore i've been writing this joke about how i didn't orgasm until i was in college till i was 18 i think that's actually i don't i first did when i was 18 too because i and it was we're adorable. We, <laughs> I took a class at Wisconsin called like sexual wellness and they literally explained scientifically like how a person orgasms. Then I was like, oh, so I guess like I can do that. I thought it was some like <laughs> weird thing that like guys just did like with a sock in their bedroom all the time. Yeah. I thought like, you were going to say a saw. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they just it's had to be cutting movie. lumber. Yeah. To- <laughs> but yeah, guys, it's, it's in the media. Like people talk about it all yes. the time where women, 
we also don't talk about it to each other. I no. didn't, my friends didn't talk about it. Or someone would be like, do you masturbate? And I'd be like, no. And that was like, good. Like, oh, good. You don't mess. Of course, I don't mess. No one was talking to me about this. <laughs> I think because they knew I was gay. That's like another thing is like I never got to be in those conversations because I'm so like flagrantly gay. Yeah. That like girls didn't talk to me about these things because it felt like almost like talking to the opposite sex in that this is like a potential sexual partner. So Did you like, hang out with guys or girls in like high school? Both. I hung out with both. All of my high school friends are queer. Yes. Like all so of them. So you found your people, but they probably weren't all they out weren't, yet. No, we weren't out in high school. Well, I was the gayest person on the fucking planet, <laughs> but everyone knew I was gay. It was, I wish I could have come out, but I don't even think coming out for me. When I came out, it was very much like, yeah. Wait, so when did you actually come out? <laughs> you start coming out and everyone's like, yeah, we know. And they just continue yeah. talking. I'm like, guys, this is like a monumental moment for me. It's like, They're can like, you Ashley pass the salt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get it. You wore a strap on when can you were you five. Can you pass the remote, please? <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> you wore a strap on when you were five. Oh, my God. Also, I feel like people try to talk about, I'm talking from the stupid straight perspective. They try to talk about lesbians like tops and bottoms, like gay guys are tops and bottoms. But I, that's not. To be fair, we we talk about it like in this way that, there, yeah, exactly. It doesn't exist because not to get like philosophical and mm -hmm. political, no, we but love like it. the language around tops and bottoms and sexual dominance is rooted in the patriarchy. Yes. Like the presence of a penis is top, like by definition of what we understand and like these masculine feminine energies to be. So when you really... With men, with gay men, it makes a little more sense because there are buttholes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it like makes it easier to talk about. But when you subtract the penis from the equation, the language just totally falls apart. Yeah. So we don't really even have language to facilitate conversations about sex that don't involve a penis, which is why it's so confusing to everybody because we literally don't even have the words. So top, But top and bottom usually refers to energy energy but also like i want to talk about it in terms of sports it's like who's call, who's calling the plays oh, you know what i, I mean like that. there's like a playmaker i always just envision like <laughs> so stupid like top and bottom meant like someone's lying on their back and the other one's on top like doing stuff but it doesn't even but you could be on you could be like getting eaten out being like yeah to the right yeah go in it <laughs> and you're calling the shots yes exactly. <laughs> and that's like top energy yeah yeah so it doesn't it doesn't totally make sense and it probably and it like goes back and forth sometimes yes of course i would say most people just like in straight relationships and gay male relationships most people are very switchy Yes. And that's like the most fun that you can like be all the different things that you want to be. But what is cool is now going back to comedy, <laughs> comedy is such a straight man thing. Yeah. And I remember you kind of struggling with feeling like you even mentioned it today, feeling judged like, oh, everyone sees me as like the lesbian comic. It's like no one would see you as that if it was major, if the majority of comics were like, yes, lesbians. Yes. Um, how has it been kind of finally really making a mark and an indent in this industry that is so dominated by straight people in general? Everyone is going to look at me like I'm the lesbian comedian because that, A, that is who I am, but B, I was ignored by everybody mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. so, sorry. Thank you. My people would love that. <laughs> yeah, yes, go off. Yeah. Um, that I had to go to a place like TikTok to use the algorithm to get to my people. And it was lesbians and queer people and, and gay men too, and non binary people and trans folks. They were the people that were like, no, fuck everybody. You're hilarious. That elevated me and lifted me up. And now everyone all of a sudden. <laughs> Is like, oh wow, she's really good. <laughs> oh, we should have her on our podcast. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, but you had me before. Oh, gee. Yes. I'm the real one. Yes. And I, that's why the internet is so awesome because <laughs> even <laughs> think about it's like, so cool. It's it's the coolest. We love the internet. We love the internet. The internet. Think cool. about meme culture. People didn't know that it was women writing a lot of the yes. memes. And then next thing you know, like, 
female humor blew the fuck up yes. where this meme page is called female humor that's like eight million because people were just reading things being like this is hilarious I mean, not knowing that it was like a it, woman writing it it all goes back to teenage girls like controlling the internet like yep. te- 14 year old girls like, kind of decide like what's in and what's not in yeah. at the end of the day yeah but i now i couldn't give a fuck if someone decides to call me like the lesbian comedian because like I am making money. Yeah. So like, why would I care? And also like the people are bringing this, this is the little secret. Straight men are actually the people who respond to my humor the most because Wait, I do what? have a masculine energy. Yes. And I think when they watch me, they're like, Oh, she, she is likes like pussy me. Too. <laughs> yeah. Like she <laughs> understands how I understand women Yeah. and I can play into this misogynistic voice in this satirical way i'm obviously not a misogynist yeah but i can play can play one. off it and like men are like oh my god she understands this part of me that i know is a little problematic but i don't mean it that way but yes. also i am a little bit and that i way. love that because let's be clear we hate straight men on this podcast <laughs> um however I love when we can bring it together. Yeah. Like even I like my jokes better when there's an audience with guys and of girls because the tension is so much more fun. Oh, and then we're wow, all having so fun. Interesting. Yeah. Because if it's all girls, it's like you're just in a locker room talking shit. But it's like if there's a guy there, it's like, let's look at yeah, his yeah, reaction. Yeah, yeah, Does he yeah, think yeah. it's awkward? Is he confused? And he feels like, ooh, I'm yeah. hearing things that are naughty. And the next thing you know, are you coming for him? And the girls are laughing at that. It's so funny because the men in my crowds, they're the people that laugh first. Mm-hmm. Like they're the people who the alpha really, laughers. really get it. And like my queer audience is starting to understand it. They're bringing their male friends to the show. They're bringing their straight friends to the show. So I, I, I trust that organically, once I break out of this internet phase of my career, there will be other people at the shows and people will stop calling me the lesbian comedian and they'll just call me a comedian. And you know, if they don't find, I still have, I love that so much because we (laughs) are bringing people together and I want to apologize, Dave, I, we don't hate you. Um, but everyone else we do, but we, it's great that as a lesbian comic, it doesn't mean you're just talking to lesbians as like a straight female comic. It doesn't mean I'm just talking to other straight. And I really, it's cause you're being authentic to yourself and you're not just being like corny yeah. stereotypical. You're speaking from an individual experience. And if any of my listeners are listening right now, and I hope that you are like Hannah's stuff is fucking hysterical. Yeah, like the, the stuff that she does talking about straight men is like so funny. Like <laughs> there's no reason that we can't enjoy each other's perspectives and learn from them. Oh, for sure. And it, it makes you more understanding of yourself when you can understand another individual totally. going through whatever they're going through. We're going to do a speed round of the seven deadly sins because you've done it before, but your life has changed a lot. Yes. What are you greedy about? Oh, man, probably money. Ooh. Now that not not like I'm scared. I have like um, a scarcity mentality. So I'm like kind of hoarding at the moment. I'm I'm similar to you in a way. I want to know, do you are you good at negotiating? I don't know. (laughs) Why would I know that? I'm not that like, successful. Do you ask for more with shit? I, yeah, yeah, I do. That's good. I always try to ask for more and I try to spend as little as possible because I'm just so fr- afraid all of this will be taken away from me that I'm trying to save up as much as I can. That's what I'm like. However, I just got married and I think it was like a... And I wanted to pay for my own wedding because I was like, I've worked hard. I've, my parents have done a lot for me and now I, I like, I, I just don't like That's my... That's awesome. I, it's also my own thing where I'm like, I don't want anyone to use anything yes, against yes. me. <laughs> but like since I'm 18, I've been financially independent. Yeah. And I just, Cause they've always, it's like a thank you. So anyway, I almost feel like it's like an exposure therapy that I just spent so much bullshit money on my wedding that I I'm like, getting one I don't feel it anymore I'm doing it in a backyard you I'm definitely doing, okay. I saw your wedding and I was also like, that's what I said I said I wanted a garage wedding and then you start talking to people you start getting a wedding TikTok and next thing you know you're like we need disco balls <laughs> we, I'm like a nice sculpture we, of myself we need, we need an ice sculpture I, I get two scale <laughs> ice sculpture of myself I said, <laughs> yeah I was like I need dolphins I need a human <laughs> sacrifice and then it'll be Perfect. Where'd you get the human sacrifice? I don't know. I just feel like it had that kind of vibe. Like no humans were sacrificed, but there was a vibe. It was like a tribal, like, I don't know. It was an event. Y- you'd get it if you saw the aesthetic. Um, <laughs> who are you envious of? Huh. I don't have this as much anymore. I've worked on it, but still a little bit. 
the comedians who are just plucked up and and early in their careers and are like chosen by industry as like, mm. oh, you're like, we're a tastemaker and we see it in you. Cause I never had that. And I had to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. And so I am a little bit like, fuck but off. But that's why I kind of like the chip on your shoulder. Like that's like when you are successful, it feels like that much more fun. I I also think it's bad because I'm constantly like, I'm still mad. And everyone's like, why are you mad? You're doing it. Sounds like your mom was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. What are, you, what are you gluttonous about? What do you overindulge in? Overindulge. Since you don't like to be addicted to things what do you let yourself i definitely can fucking eat dude same i i can what's your what's your go-to ice cream oh des is like that i i can put it away yeah easy a pint of ice what's easy. your go-to i like ben and jerry's what flavor cherry garcia actually underrated <laughs> underrated flavor it's really good the i like sweet, chunky monkey too the sweet and the tart mm, hell yeah well, speaking of anger, I sorry. Now I just envision like four year old you just like punching walls, like an angry white man after <laughs> but a football I wasn't game. Is the thing. <laughs> I think I was just a standard issue four year old. Yeah, you had like one tantrum. When was the last time you experienced extreme wrath or anger? Extreme. It's been a while. Oh man, I was overworked in the fall. I was like having some weird stuff going on with my ex and I was on a carnival cruise oh. and I had been like kind working? of working. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what the fuck, Hannah? No offense if you like carnival cruise, but it is not for, it is not for a gay woman from New York city. Are you kidding Don't me? Don't they have gay cruises? They do, but not on carnival. On Carnival, everything's a straight cruise. They don't bill it that way, but it is. It's a Trump rally. So I, I'm off. <laughs> it's a Trump rally on the water. Yeah. Uh, I, I got, I lost my temper on, with my ex-girlfriend. Because I was overworked. I was sleeping underneath the nightclub. No. I was awake for like four days. Oh no. I felt really bad about it. I still feel bad about well, it. Well, now you're self-aware about it, which is nice. When was the last time you were lazy or... A sloth just slept in all day. Yesterday, I took the day off. Hell yeah. Yeah. Are you good at giving yourself I took two kind of meetings, balance? but I took the day off. Yes. Um, no, I'm not good about it. Yeah. I hate feeling, I can't feel lazy. There's a voice in my brain that says, why aren't you working right now? Yeah. I don't know if you have that, but. I definitely have that, except now I like, I like love doing nothing because I feel so rebellious and naughty. So like once I finish all my work, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to lay here for two hours being fucking crazy. I hope I get to that point soon where I can do that. Yeah. But now I realize like it's it's not that exciting and I need to stop. I need to like level out a little bit like because I'll call myself lazy. And it's like, oh, because you watch TV for three hours at yeah, night after yeah. working all like day. Like everybody else. Exactly. When was the last time you let your ego get in the way of something? Oh, probably today. <laughs> <laughs> probably on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like seven minutes ago next question <laughs> <laughs> literally all the time do you try to control your ego yes i try to have like vent sessions with my friends my manager <laughs> just to be like this is fucking bullshit mm -hmm. and then i do whatever they good tell me to do i'm like that i'll have a core group of people that i can be my actual self with yeah. and then put yeah. my polite face on for the exactly. rest of the day exactly <laughs> when was the last time you lusted over someone Ooh. i mean all the time all the time. Do you have a celebrity crush? Not really. Not who would I say is a celebrity crush? Emma Watson. Oh wow. I would love to go on a date with Emma Watson. If anyone can make that happen, that would be pretty cool. I love you just talking into the ether right now. That's called manifestation, everyone. Yeah, I'm I'm manifesting. Emma Watson, she's like mysterious because she's not on social media. She's not? I don't think so. She's a feminist. She's very smart. Yes. She's very like powerful. She does like a lot of philanthropic social activism work. I don't know if she would describe it that way, but that's how it seems to me. Do you think she's bi? Just give me five minutes. I can tell you. Oh! I, don't, I don't mean that in like an obnoxious way. I mean that like in a, oh. I can talk to someone. Oh. <laughs> I know what my odds are. Oh, yeah. So you, you seem so straight to me. 
and you hurt my feelings because <laughs> I honestly feel like I'd be I, so I much more. I understand why people find like I'm supremely athletic. Like I get the and I have masculine energy, right? But that doesn't make you not straight, like straight or gay. It's like a different thing. Straight or gay is like a different thing. Yeah. Although I was totally wrong about Ashley Hesseltine. Cause like Ashley Hesseltine, I thought super straight energy. And then I did her show and she started fl flirting with me a little bit. Well, Ashley's on having fun at this moment in her life. Ashley is, <laughs> did she actually flirt with you? A, a, a little bit, but I, I didn't know if it was like for the stage or for what? You're like, are we dating? I, have, I think I have it on tape, but she was like, she was like, you kind of look like this guy that oh, I remember. I've been dating. And then she was like, she said she used to send pictures to him. Like, this is a hotter version of you or whatever. This is like the hot gay version of you. So she's like low key has a crush on you. I, I don't know if she does, but I was, I sensed like gay energy for the first time. And I was like, oh, I had not picked up on this before. So you, you have like legit gaydar. Cause I have good gaydar with guys where I can tell like, not that every guy wants to fuck me, but I could tell if they're into women kind of. That's what it is. Yeah. There's like Where a with women, I cannot tell for shit. <laughs> with women, I can't. Because also I, I am kind of like, I like to make everyone laugh anyway. So like, I can't tell what's going on. Right. But with men, I can easily tell. You know what? I can tell if they res respect women or not. If they respect women, they're gay. <laughs> they're, no, they're straight. <laughs> and all girls respect women. So then I can't tell. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay. That was a very generalization. But you can tell when they're like, oh, I want to bend that girl over versus. Is like I'm just enjoying this conversation oh god anyway we're so sexual we're just like aware and sexual wellness final question <laughs> final question I'm always like what what is a lesbian um no actual final question and I do have to say I am the straight Labrador retriever of the lesbians in her podcast sorry Please come back which I will be coming back to what advice would you give to the little devils on how to cope with their hell? When you're going through it, what helps you survive? There's this course called The Science of Well-Being from Yale. Don't be spreading cults out here. It's not a cult. It's from Yale. It's a psych class. Okay. It saved my life. Like, truly. Truly saved my life. Repeat it again. The Science of Well-Being. I didn't do the readings. I only did the lectures. It's like half an hour a week. And that's when I started exercising, meditating, getting good sleep, practicing gratitude and kindness. I know this sounds like so fucking stupid and it is, but it's also, it works. When did you do it? 2019, started in 2019. Wow, so I when had, things started to shift for you. Yeah, it changed, totally changed my life. I was very depressed, suicidal ideation all the time and, and now I'm the happiest I've been in my life. I, I evangelize this thing because wow. it's just like, we all talk about self-work like it's this ambiguous joke on the internet. But the reality is our society is designed in a way like that really fucks us up. Mm -hmm. And there are things that our brain does respond to. Exercise, meditation, socializing, mm -hmm. you know, like all these different things. You should just do them. Even when you don't want to do them, you should just do them. Wow. So, save my life. I highly recommend it. Fuck yeah. This has been so funny, insightful, sexual. Where can people listen to you? Watch it has you? been sexual. It's been so sexual. It's been incredible. <laughs> now that everyone's wet, where can they follow you? Um, I'll, Right now I'm banned on it. Shadow banned on Instagram. I think I am too. Are you really? Yeah, I did like an I hate men shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we did a I, men are trash tour or something and they banned me. Whatever. Continue. <laughs> it's not... It's, so if you're going to look me up, you have to put in my exact handle, which is Ash Gavs. But you can also just go to AshleyGavin.com and literally all my stuff is there. My tour dates, I'm going to San Francisco at the end of June. Will this be out? Yes. San Francisco at the end of June. Raleigh at the beginning of June. Yes. Virginia over the summer, the Midwest in August. Okay. So many, the, the Philly, literally everywhere, the whole country. Obsessed. So you Omaha. have to see her live. Hell Yeah. See your live listener podcast. Oh yeah, we're having gay sex. Listen to my episode and I'll be on it again. And yeah, this is my bitch. I love you so much. Thank you I for love coming you. Thank today. Thank you for having me. Bye. You killed it. <laughs>